I've got my power supply set up. Let me just rotate that round a little bit to 9 volts. Plugged into this connector. I've got the polarity correct. Uh, we're plugged into the composite video, plugged into the television. There I plug it in after all this time. Here goes. Okay. Well, I'm still admit that's a bit disappointing, uh, but given the number of components I've just soldered on, not unexpected. So the next thing I need to do is check all of the solder connections and check I put the chips in the right way and in the right place. Um, I'm pretty sure they're in the right way because I did a check last night. Um, they're all facing upwards with a notch upwards with the exception of the AY and um, which is this chip here uh, and uh, this fellow over here is facing left obviously. Back in a minute whilst I do some checking. So, all the chips are in the right way. Um, all the solder connections look okay. I mean, this is this is the work here, in the back. You can see there's an awful lot of solder connections. I mean, in fact, I've gone through almost an entire uh, 0.025 kilogram packet of solder here. Uh, there's just a bit left on the end of the reel. They all seem fine. There's a couple of joints I could probably do with um, revisiting at some point with soldering them, but they seem to have good connections. There's no obvious shorts. Um, power seems to be getting to the board. So what could the problem be? So, diagnosis time. So, where do I start? Chips are seated. Process of elimination. The ROM has been programmed. We've got ROM selects, which makes sure that Let's make sure I've selected the correct ROM. So magnifying glass, double check. Uh, jumper 17 to the top, which is correct. Uh, where's jumper 18? It's also at the top. So we're selecting the correct ROM. So question, have I actually programmed in the ROMs correctly? Um, well, there's one obvious thing I can try, which is the dip switches. So I wonder if this is reversed. So let's try flicking these. I've got ROM0 as the 48k spectrum. So let's assume that off is on and on is off. And let's select those to all be on. Working on the basic assumption that either the instructions are wrong or I soldered this dip switch in upside down. So before they were all off, that should be zero. And according to the dip switch, I should now be selecting bank seven. But if I sold it upside down, or the instructions are wrong, maybe that is selecting bank zero. Let's try it. Hey, check it out. I was right. Fantastic. So let me just check the instructions on this. Let me get the instructions out. So I'll have a look at his diagram. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything? Have I programmed them in the wrong banks? I reckon he's got the instructions back to front there. Because I've definitely programmed 48k into bank 0. Unless bank 0 is bank 7 and bank 7 is bank 0, the ROM's back to front. Okay, so let's work on the assumption. We've got three more, two or three more ROMs programmed on it in here. So ROM one, let's unplug it, should be a vanilla toast rack. So if that's correct, that should be down. So I'm selecting ROM one. One to eight. There you go. Let's move this fella out of the way. There you go. One to eight, working absolutely fine. Well, I must admit, 
a little bit of a flutter there when it just displayed the uh, stripes. I was about to get the oscilloscope out to check whether or not the Z80 had a clock line. I don't know I bent a pin on the Z80 last night inserting it. Um, it's the bottom rightmost pin. So that'll be pin 21, I guess. Um, the bottom of it snapped off, but there's enough contact in there in the socket in order to make it work, so I'm not going to bother getting a new Z80. Um, that was at quarter past goodness knows what time in the morning trying to get this sorted. Okay, observations. Need to get a keyboard plugged in. So um, I've got a 48k Spectrum veneer keyboard membrane. Um, I'll probably use that unless I can jury rig the old membrane off that just to type something in. Um, picture's not bad for composite, not bad at all. Um, certainly a lot more, a lot steadier than the uh, composite output that I bodged on my 48k Spectrum. Uh... I'm just amazed it works. You think of the ULA as this magic black box that you throw a signal at and it outputs, um, you throw RAM at and it outputs a video signal. But it's actually all been implemented by these ROM chips, these, uh, these um, logic chips, this picture. I find that quite amazing. The fact that you can actually get a signal like that running a computer on a Z80 with so few chips. That is astonishing. It really is. And I'm actually quite pleased that this almost worked first time, despite the fact I had a slight wobble with the uh, ROM select there. <sighs> At ease, everyone. So, in my next video, um, there's two things I need to do now. One is just quickly give it a bit of a run through. So I'll probably throw a diagnostic ROM on there at some point. Second thing is to uh, just check it, check it quickly with my 48k keyboard, just to make sure everything's working. So I need to double check the AUI is working and do a, a RAM test. Although I assume it, the system's done a RAM test anyway in order to uh, get this far. And uh, that's it. I'm really, really happy about that. Oh, the other things I have tested, uh, cassette output and input and the RGB socket, but I've not got an RGB cable, so uh, I'm pretty sure that'll be fine. Really, really pleased, really, really pleased. Um, that's quite a few days work has gone into that. I've temporarily housed the Harlequin in a donor Spectrum 48k case. It's a 48k Spectrum that currently needs a little bit of repair work doing on it. So here is the board itself. Uh, the bottom 16k seems to be struggling with voltages, so I suspect I need to fix a transistor. This one here, but that's another story. We've got a case, we've got a keyboard, and I've got some ROMs programmed on the EEPROM. So I'm going to step through what I've got installed on here already, and we'll run a diagnostic and check all of the hardware is correct. I first need to open it up, so I'll remove the composite video cable. Flick the spectrum over and undo these screws. Five in total. There we go, use the magnetic bit there so I don't lose the screws. And the last one is here. Thankfully, none are hidden under rubber feet. Let's get them to stick back on. Is a bit of pain. Flick us over. There we go. And open her up carefully, avoiding damage to the ribbon cables. So you can see the Harlequin board fits quite nicely in there. Uh, this is the dip switch select I'm going to be going through in a bit in order to demonstrate stepping through the ROMs. Very nice. So let's uh, carefully unplug the keyboard membrane. One. There we go. Move this out of the way temporarily. So, what do we have? We've got a motherboard that fits nicely in the Spectrum 48 case. 
The only difference is there's a screw on the Spectrum 48K motherboard. Let me get the 48K motherboard to show you. There's a screw hole here. I don't know if you can see it, which holds the motherboard in place on the bottom case shell. There's no room for the hole, so it does rattle around a little bit. Uh, the other thing to note is the um, modulator has been replaced by just a pure composite video output to save space. A modulator is unnecessary in this day and age, which does mean that this sits rather low. So when I get around to fitting it in a new case, I'll probably have to cut this bit out here in order for the composite cable to fit in without snagging on the bottom of the case. And the only other difference, of course, is the uh, RGB output. There is no hole there, so again, when I get around to fitting it in a proper case, I'll cut a hole here for the RGB. I think that's probably it, really. Maybe at some point in the future, I'll wire up the joystick interface on this side of the case, if I had room for that. But this case that it's sitting in at the moment is not going to get cut because that's going to be um, the home for the Spectrum 48K I'm repairing. So, the dip switch. The instructions from Byte Delight, uh, which they've subsequently revised, Bennett um, Byte Delight has subsequently revised, um, were wrong. So the way that this works is you have the on position to the right and the off position to the left. Off is on and on is off on this. Now if you imagine these three representing a three bit number, you would expect that off to represent zero. In fact, that is effectively all on, so that represents seven. So as we're stepping through the ROMs, we're going to start off at zero, like so, and then we're going to go on to one. Like so, and then two, and so on. So we'll start off with ROM zero. Let's find out what we've got programmed in there. We've got a diagnostic ROM. So I'll let this step through its initial tests. Looks a bit alarming, but I assume this is fine. Looking good so far. Okay, so we know the 48k bit's working, that's fine. Uh, what shall we test? So let's test them. 1 to 8k memory, make sure everything's right in the upper banks. No idea how long this takes. Oh, it's not too bad. Now, there are only two RAM chips on this, so I'm expecting it to pass these. Theory being, if it's passed all of the other RAM tests, then surely the uh, the rest of the RAM should be fine, unless we've got a duff bit somewhere. Oh, that's good. Uh, video buffer test. Let's just double check. Not 
that looks okay to me, I think. So it's passed the 1 to 8 tests, which is good. System ULA tests. Now this will be interesting. Because this doesn't actually have a ULA in. It is stuck high. Uh, okay, I'm not sure whether that's right or wrong. But it seems to be working, so it's probably okay. Z80 analysis. There we go. Here my tests. Fifty hertz interrupt test. That seems to be working fine. Snow effect test. That's good because we're not a Spectrum 48 or 16K. Multiplexer test. I think that's okay, isn't it? So let's go on to the next run. Now we're going to switch to run one. ZX81 emulator. This is quite an interesting one. I'll come back to this one at some point. And now on to ROM 2. ROM 2 is empty. That's the symptom of an empty ROM. Um, as you know from my initial tests of this board, that was quite an alarming sign. But not to fear, that's just the ROM being empty and the Z80 trying to execute a load of FFs. ROM free. Also empty. ROM 4. four. One to eight basic looks like a plus three of that. The tell is drive M available and um, plus three basic as well in the menu. Select ROM five. That looks like plus two ROM. ROM 6. six. <laughs> That's the toast wrap ROM. And finally, ROM 7. It's the 48k ROM. So I have two ROM banks spare. Um, the plan will be to put BBC Basic into one of those, and the second one I will leave blank for future use. Um, so the first game I'm going to try um, is Ghouls and Ghosts. So uh, let's click the loader. 
start the virtual tape on my tablet. A bit of luck, this will start working. And there we go. You don't get the tape noise on this because it's got um, it's got no beeper speaker in there. Um, I'm assuming you get the tape noises um, if you had it plugged into a speaker. Um, it's a slightly different um, tape input output on the Harlequin than on the Spectrum 48. The ear socket is for loading and saving so it uses a stereo jack and you need to split it into two mono jacks. I'm just using a stereo jack on this for loading. I'm not too bothered about saving at the moment and that seems to work fine. Um, and the mic output is used for stereo output speakers from the AUI. Well, that seems to be loading OK. Hopefully we'll see the loading screen in a couple of seconds. And we'll forward wind to near the end of the game, because this is near the end of the load, because this is going to take about 12 minutes to load. 12 minutes 43 to be exact. And there's the loading screen. So, uh, I'm going to fast forward to the next bit. See you in uh, 11 minutes. So the game has almost finished loading now, we've got about 20 seconds or so. Um, once it's loaded I'll have to swap the uh, cable out of the ear socket into the mic socket and, to, and put it into some speakers. So have a bit of look, in a few seconds we will have the title screen, fingers crossed. And there we go. So I'm going to swap the cable over now, back in a second. So here we go, it's loaded. Absolutely fantastic. Set some controls up, so I'll have uh, left, right, jump, crouch, fire. Classic uh, Tim Follin tune here. So it's actually a lot more colourful than I remember it, this game. So let's go for it. See if I'm any good. It's actually pretty good, this really smooth scroll. I think Mike really captured the uh, spirit of the original here. He certainly did a lot better than I did on the Amstrad version. Oh, wow, man, that's good. Is that an extra life? There we go. The rain effect on this is really good if I remember correctly. Might put a lot of attention into this. Attention to detail. So it's the web a bit now. Let's get through the big guillotine first. There we go. the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed watching. Thank you very much.